Hey guys, welcome back to another plant shop vlog. We are at the end of March. I can't believe how fast March went. It felt like it wasn't even here. I did go ahead and place our plant wholesale orders for the shop. So today's vlog is going to be a very productive one, probably a long one. We have a large shipment of plants this time. If you didn't see my last vlog, make sure you guys go check that out because I did unbox another plant shipment in that vlog as well. We got some really cool anthurium hybrids. So make sure you guys check that out. Today, we're going to be unboxing this large box as you guys can see this box is huge it's almost as tall as me this order is much bigger than our normal orders this is the biggest order I have ever done for the shop there are 65 plants in here which normally I only order around 40 and usually when I do get the shipment I get around 35 to 30 this time we actually got all 65 plants I almost can't believe it so this is going to be a huge unboxing I hope you guys are excited for it the plants on my shop are not not imports these plants all come from a very reputable wholesale greenhouse in Florida so they're not in the mail too long just two days so let's go ahead and check out all these plants I'm gonna try to move through this a little bit faster than normal just because we have so many here is the first one this is a Hoya I will put the name on the screen nothing is labeled so I'm gonna have to look back at the invoice to make sure because honestly I have no clue they have a lot of new Hoyas right now and this is definitely new that they put it on this cute little clear trellis it's just like plastic it's honestly feels like a plastic tube or something like that that they bent but it is pretty cute and it is fuzzy as well and this one is alocasia bambino variegated very beautiful look at the color such beautiful leaves i'm so happy that they have these in stock again i'm assuming that they're all this size like little babies these are definitely corn grown this is definitely a nice little starter if you're looking for this plant and you want to get it at a cheaper price the smaller ones obviously are cheaper but just as another look it has some really nice color the back of the leaves are really pretty you can see that pink color coming through we have another alocasia here this is a another corn grown this is alocasia dragon scale variegated very beautiful i just sold the last one on the shop so i'm very happy to bring these guys back how cute is this one this one is another hoya this is what it looks like it has two leaves. It does come on that little clear trellis thing that they have on there. Anytime a plant comes on a plank, trellis, or a pole, I usually do leave it all intact and you can get it with the plant if you purchase it. And we have another Alocasia Bambino variegated. Here's what the leaves look like. Really pretty color, very similar to the last one. We have a Rapidophora Tetrasperma variegated here. Just had these on the shop recently and they went so fast, so I got some more. Very nice, they have some nice variegation as well. Very nice leaves, some pretty variegation here. Looks pretty good and it's like a pretty nice size as well. We have a new Hoya that we've never had before here. It comes on this really cute bamboo trellis. This one actually has a tag. This is called Hoya RHM 066 Mary Alice and here is what it looks like it is so cute it has some cute little round leaves here so I think the reason why I was able to get all the plants this time is because I was actually like waiting for them to send out their bi-weekly email I believe that they update their list bi-weekly on Fridays and I was waiting on a Friday like for this email to come in and as soon as they sent that email I like opened it and made the order immediately and I think that's why I was able to get everything because I was probably like one of the first in line I usually don't catch it that fast because like I'm working and stuff but I like stopped everything that I was doing to make this order because I did not want to miss out because they had tons of new stuff this is a new Hoya for us let's see if I can get this one right Hoya SB Rindu Raffle Sia. So it also comes on this cute bamboo trellis. This Hoya is really nice. It has like some really long leaves, super cute. Definitely looks different from most Hoyas that I've seen, like with the leaf shape. We have a Alocasia Frydeck variegated. We haven't had these in a little while, actually. These haven't been available. So when I saw that they were available, I knew I had to get them again. They have some really nice color for their size. Very cute. And here is another Alocasia Frydeck variegated. So this one is definitely a little bit bigger than the one I just 
just showed you. It has some really nice colored leaves here. This one is really pretty. Look at this one here. And we have one more Alocasia Fry Deck Variegated. This one is similar size to that one I just showed you. This is what this one's looking like. They're actually pretty similar in color and they all do have like an extra puff growing out of them. Maybe I can separate them and have some extras because I know a lot of people still really like this plant and are trying to get one. We have another Alocasia Dragon Scale Variegated here. And here is the color on this one. We have a solid white leaf right here, as you can see, but the rest of the plant seems pretty stable. I'm not expecting it to do it again, to be honest. It doesn't seem like it's that highly variegated. So I'm kind of shocked that it actually did that, but it's still really nice. So this one is super exciting. Look how cute this little specimen is. This is Monstera Aria. How beautiful is the color of this plant? This is like the perfect size that I want to sell plants for my shop but that doesn't always happen because I do get really large plants in shipment. I can't control like if I get small ones or large ones. It does have a new leaf coming in in here and the color is really nice too. And here is another one, same thing, similar size, similar color. This one, I'm not gonna even bother trying to pronounce it, but here is what it looks like. It has a really massive leaf down here. Look at this one, so nice. I'm guessing the clear trellis is something new that they're doing, but it is a really cute touch. This is another Hoya on a clear trellis. Wow, this one is super fuzzy. Oh my goodness, I hope that you guys can see. It is so fuzzy, it's so soft, it's so pretty, oh my gosh. They have a really nice Hoya selection. They actually have a giant Hoya greenhouse. They have a Hoya expert as well. I think they have experts for each type of plant, but their Hoya expert, she is really good with the Hoya. She sources really good ones. She just does a great job. The greenhouse is beautiful. They do send pictures of their greenhouses and stuff like that when they send us the order form and stuff. If I ever Ever do make it down to Florida for a trip, I would love to visit their actual greenhouse and meet them and everything like that. I know that they do wholesale like greenhouse tours and stuff if you're in the area. Um, so maybe one day I'll have to plan that. There is just like no other reason though for me to like go to Florida. I've been to Florida so many times, like especially in my younger years, I'm like Florida out <laughs> and I just have no reason to really go there. The only reason I would go there is to literally probably see this greenhouse. Um, but other than that, I don't think I'm really interested. <laughs> another Hoya here, another new one. This is what it looks like comes on that nice trellis too. A lot of these I have never heard of. Um, usually when I'm ordering stuff, I will check what's new and I will just Google pictures of it. Sometimes they do post actual photos of like the stock so that you can have an idea of what it looks like. I just kind of pick what's new on their list and whatever is like kind of trending. I also pay a lot of attention to plants on Etsy just so I can have an idea of what people are shopping and stuff like that. And also I watch a lot of recent plant unboxings on YouTube so I can kind of get a general idea of stuff that people are looking for and what their wish list plants are and stuff like that. We have another Alocasia fried egg variegated here. This is what this one is looking like. I was actually really shocked that so many of you guys really like this plant. I feel like it's not that popular and I don't know if it's just not popular because not a lot of people have it um, or you can't really find it. But when I put these on the shop, they went like instantly and I was just like really shocked. I didn't think that many people cared about it, but I'm glad that I like purchased it that one time because now I know. I've been wanting to post content on TikTok. I do have a TikTok already, but like I wanna post different content. I never know what to post because I have a hard time with TikTok. I use Instagram kind of as like a gallery like for the shop plants and my plants. It's not like that with TikTok. It's a little more complicated for me. But now I'm like, is it even worth it? Because did you guys hear that like they're trying to ban TikTok? So now I'm just like wondering, is it even worth like trying to build myself on that app? And should I just like let it go? I don't really know what the status is with the whole banning TikTok thing, but I just like don't know what to even post on there, especially as like a plant content creator. That's just also going to add more things for me to do and like editing and stuff like that. And I already do it here. Um, I also, I don't know why, I feel so nervous to show my face on like a reel or like TikTok. I don't know why, because I literally show my face on YouTube, but like it feels so different when you're like doing shorts because 
so many people can see it. I, I don't know, I've been like thinking, what can I like do on TikTok? I was thinking maybe I could start like live streaming or something like that. I don't know really what to do on there. Um, this is another Alocasia Bambino variegated here. This is a Hoya New Guinea Ghost. I think I got a couple of these this time. They haven't had the New Guinea Ghost for quite a while. These ones are pretty decently sized as well, and I think that they're all gonna come on this little bamboo trellis. I also feel that Instagram is being like flooded with accounts that are doing like automated links and stuff like that, like Amazon stuff. And you know what I'm talking about when they say, comment a certain word and I'll send you the link. I just feel like that is just all over my feed and I'm just like not interested. I don't know, it's just, is that really what <laughs> Instagram is coming to? I don't know. I always use Instagram for like, just like a gallery, I guess. I really like the way my feed looks right now. If you're not doing reels, you are just, not gonna grow on there. And at this point, I just don't care anymore. I'm like so over it. This is a Philodendron Florida Beauty. This is a pretty juvenile one. I'm actually shocked. Normally their Florida Beauties are very big and have beautiful mature leaves. I will say it is very cute though. And it has some really nice color, has some nice variegation here. They do treat the Hoyas with like a sulfur spray. So that's why when I unbox them, they have specks on them and stuff. It's because they are spraying them down with that. I feel like I'm not even making a dent in this box. <laughs> we have another Monstera Lechley Rihanna variegated. This is what it looks like. Here is another Hoya. This is that long leaf one that I unboxed earlier. And this is another Rapidophora Tetrasperma variegated. Similar size, similar color. This is the leaves here. This one's actually a little bit taller than the other one. It also has a ton of growth points at the bottom. You probably can't even see, but there's like a ton of growth points on it. I do have, I think two or three of these propagating in stratum. They're actually almost ready. So if you're looking for a small one, look out for those because they'll probably be ready soon. And we have another Alocasia Bambino variegated here. These are the leaves, very cute. We have another Monstera Aria. Here is what it looks like. They are just so cute at this little size. The good thing about Monsteras is that they grow super fast and they are pretty easy to care for. The Aria can be a little bit more finicky though, I've heard. Mine is doing really well. It's actually back here. I wish mine was a little bit higher variegated. Mine currently puts out a variegated leaf and then a solid green one and then a variegated and it just repeats. I wish that like it was a little bit more stable with the variegation, but these ones have a lot of color for the size, so they're probably Probably gonna be pretty good and pretty stable. This is Philodendron SP Columbia. So this is definitely looking like some type of like tissue culture plant because there's all these pups in there. So I'm definitely gonna be separating out the little pups and putting them all into their own little pots and just growing them out. Um, this has clearly been in here for quite some time as well. I might just give it a quick little drink tonight so that it perks up. This is our first time having this one on the shop. So I'm excited for this one too. We have another Hoya Mary Alice here, also on the bamboo trellis. And here's what it looks like. We have another one of these fuzzy Hoyas. This one here is another Hoya New Guinea Ghost. And here is what it looks like. The New Guinea Ghost is one of my favorite Hoyas. I really like the light green leaves and I'm so happy mine is doing so well. I have all my Hoyas now and my Millswo behind me and a lot of them are actually sun stressing. So I'm leaving them alone. I'm not cutting them. They are actually getting quite big now. So I'm really proud of myself. I normally like to keep my Hoyas small, but I've been growing them out and they look really good. I think this is another Hoya. I got so many Hoyas. I'm trying to be on my Hoya game for you guys. Another one of these guys here. So this one is super exciting. Look at the color of the leaves. The variegation is so nice. It comes on this plank, but it is growing kind of crazy, like growing off of it. The color is like really nice. This looks awesome. We've never had this on the shop before either. A bunch of these we've actually never had. So it is always exciting when I get brand new stuff. 
another fuzzy Hoya. And here it is. This is another Raptophora Tetrasperma variegated. And here are what the leaves look like on this one. I hope I'm going at a good pace for you guys. I try to like not like drag things on in my videos. So I know it can be like boring. So I hope when I do the unboxings, it's like fast enough. <laughs> we have another Hoya. I'm pretty sure I got like half the shipment Hoyas. Um, that's what I'm trying to do at least lately. Kind of have a good range of Hoyas, but also the other aeroids as well. Another Alocasia Bambino variegated. I had to stock up on these guys because <laughs> it's not that often that they have them. And this plant is just beautiful. Oh my gosh, this one I'm so excited for. This is Epipremnum Giganteum Variegated. Look at this plant, you guys. It is gorgeous. Look, oh my gosh. I haven't been excited for a plant in a long time. Um, this one, when I saw this, I was like, absolutely, yes. This is so beautiful. You don't really see this this often, so I'm super happy to be a shop that's gonna be providing it. Oh my gosh, it's just beautiful. Like, look at these leaves. It is like, it's a nice size too. It's pretty big. Beautiful green on green variegation. It is just gorgeous. This is another Rapidophora Megasperma variegated. This one is way bigger than the last one. It's growing all types of crazy. Hopefully you can even see what's going on here, but um, it does have a plank as well, but it's like not even growing on it. And here are the leaves. It has really nice color. It's very pretty. This plant can get quite big as well, get some really nice big leaves. Um, definitely probably does best on some type of support because as you can see, the leaves got a little bit small since they grew off of it. The way that this one is growing, I'm probably going to propagate this one just because it's growing really weird anyway. And I'll just propagate it in stratum and then once they're ready, I will just sell them like that. This one is a new variegated alocasia that we've never had before. I've also never heard of it. Okay, so this one is called alocasia wentii variegated. Look at these leaves, you guys. The colors are so different. It's very beautiful. This is a new one on their list. I've been getting a lot more variegated alocasia for the shop because I'm feeling much more confident that I can actually care for them. All the alocasia that I get for the shop, I actually keep them in the display cases. And that's the only way I've been like keeping them alive with that extra humidity. It helps so much. I am not an alocasia expert, but that has been helping me a lot. The previous alocasia bamboo you know that I had on the shop. Um, it was actually here for like six months and I'm shocked that I kept it alive for six months, but I literally kept it in the display case and it grew beautifully. I was honestly sad to see that plant go. A really funny story about that plant. I'm just gonna share it because I think it's just funny. The customer that bought it, he bought it as a Valentine's Day gift for his wife and I Guess he didn't really know what type of plant she liked, but she hates alocasias. But yeah, I gave her a lot of tips on how to care for it and what I was doing for it. So hopefully um, she grew to love it. But yeah, that plant went to somebody who actually hated alocasias, so yeah. <laughs> Here is another one of that same plant, the alocasia wentii. This is what this one's looking like. We are getting close to the bottom because the big ones are coming out. I'm pretty sure this is a Monstera Albo. Been waiting for these guys for a little bit. They haven't had them in stock. Has some really nice color. This is a beautiful newest leaf here. Has a new leaf on the way. Here is some of the other leaves too. Looks really nice. Kind of growing a little chaotic, but uh, we'll see what we can do with it. The last Monstera Albo, that I had, I propagated. I took a top cut of it. I still do have the bottom cut. The bottom cut is actually producing all white leaves only. The top cut, it got stem rot, you guys. So I completely like lost the plant, but it just really sucks when that happens. There's like nothing you can do. And there was no saving it because that was the only node and it was just getting worse and worse. So had to let it go, but I do still have the bottom cut. It is just putting out all white leaves, but I am excited to get some new albos on the shop because it's been a while. I think the only one I have on the shop right now is a low variegated one. So it's nice to have some higher variegated ones. This is another one of those Epipremnum Giganteum variegated. This is what it looks like. I had the Philodendra Giganteum variegated on the shop a couple months ago, back in like maybe 
October, November. You guys really like those, but those came gigantic. This is what this one is looking like. It is gorgeous. I am obsessed with this plant, you guys. I, I love this plant so much. This is another one of those Philodendron SP Columbia's. This one's also pretty dehydrated, but I will take dehydrated plant over overwater plant any day. Um, this is what it looks like. Also has a bunch of little guys in there too. The Hoya New Guinea Ghost Sunstress, really nice. It actually gets like a pinkish purple like hue to it. It's so pretty. Mine's finally starting to do it. It's so cute. We are getting close to the bottom. So this one is new for them and new for us as well. This one I took a chance with. This is Epipremnum Pinatum Yellow Flame. This is what it looks like. Has beautiful fenestrations, has some little fenestrations in the middle here. It's kind of growing all over the place, but it looks really nice. We're not gonna get into the Pothos Epipremnum thing. This plant is gonna be sold as it was sold to me. Epipremnum Yellow Flame, that's what they're calling it, then that's what it's gonna be. I don't really care. The greenhouse clearly don't care. Um, so like it is what it is. I know that there is like a lot of back and forth with Epipremnum and Pothos and Golden Pothos and whatever, whatever. I think this looks nice. It looks cool. I like the leaf shape. It's really neat. Um, it's beautiful, has some nice fenestrations and it is quite big too. I wasn't expecting them to be so big. I think it's gorgeous and I think it's a really cool plant to have on the shop. So that's why I got it. We have another Rapidophora Megasperma variegated. A little bit of soil spillage, but honestly not too bad this time. And this is what this one is looking like here. It definitely does look a little similar to the Epipremnum. Here's a side by side in case you were curious. This is the Epipremnum, this is the Megasperma. We are back on the Hoya. This is another fuzzy one. This one is called Hoya Thompsonii. I love that so many of them are fuzzy. Like I wasn't expecting that at all. Another little Hoya here. We already unboxed one of these earlier. It's just the little two leafer. We're not done with the Alocasia fried egg variegated. We have another one. This one looks like this. This one is a little bit bigger. It has some really nice color too. Okay, so we are down to the last few. I, I just took them all out of the box because it was like really hard for me to like dig in there because I'm so short. Pretty sure everything now is just gonna be duplicates. I think we've seen pretty much everything. This is another Hoya New Guinea Ghost. We have another Hoya Thompsonii, and here is what it looks like. Gonna do these two small ones. I know that these are Monstera Albo, so. These are Philodendron Florida Ghost. I don't even know if you can even see it because of how white it is. I gotta do like the YouTuber thing. This is a little baby right here. I'm pretty sure this is the same. Um, since they're so small, I'll probably just stick them in a bin and let them grow out a little bit more. I think that they just have a bunch of tissue cultures growing, so they're just starting to like push them out now because like spring is coming. And this is another one. Yeah, so same thing. Little tiny guys. So another Monstera Albo. This one looks like this. Has some pretty leaves. You can see here. This one is kind of big too. This one is massive. Wow, look at all these leaves in here. I can't even, wow, okay. There is a lot going on in here, but look how beautiful the leaf shape is. Pretty large too, look at how thick the stem is there. This is definitely one of those plants you wanna keep on a moss pole or a plank. And this is the last one, it's a monster elbow. So let me know what you guys think about this huge shipment. 65 plants we just unboxed. Isn't that crazy? Is this like the biggest plant unboxing on YouTube? <laughs> I got a ton of free materials, so that's always good. I do save um, these cardboard wraps and I save the polyfill so that I can use it for when I pack your orders because it doesn't make sense to just throw it out. I'm honestly shocked that my shipping wasn't more money. So for all the fees that I paid for this massive order, I paid a labor fee, which is a fee for them to pack each and every plant. That was $2.50 per plant. 
that came out to $162.52. I got charged $20 for the thermal insulation wrap. I got charged $5 for one heat pack, $5 for the box, and then the shipping came out to $486.54. And we had a total of 65 plants. Normally I do order around like 40 plants, not this many. This is their largest package that they do for shipping. But my business is clearly growing, so I was able to get a very large shipment plus the shipment that we got last week as well. So two shipments back to back in the same month that is a first for us here over at Plant Life Flex. So I just wanna say thank you guys so much because if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be here living my entrepreneur life. You guys have supported me since day one. When I was just selling cuttings on my Instagram and selling stuff on Facebook, you guys literally have been here for so long. So thank you guys all so much for supporting me, my YouTube channel, my shop, everything. I wouldn't be able to do this without you guys this is something that I really love to do so thank you guys so much I am gonna clean up in here because it is quite messy now um, I have soil everywhere I gotta like sweep it up I'm going to organize the plants give you guys a little overview break down the box and put away the supplies it's currently 9 30 at night so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up and make myself some dinner and literally go to bed because I have work tomorrow. And then I will probably see you either Friday or Saturday. Let me know what you guys think about all the plants. Let me know what your favorite was out of this bunch. And I will see you guys in a few days. It's Friday night and I just finished work. So I am going to go ahead and get started on repotting all these plants because we have a ton and it's gonna take me a while. So I kind of wanna just get working on it as soon as possible. And then tomorrow I'm going to focus on cleaning them up, getting the labels done and getting the pictures done. That way that I can focus on Sunday with just packing orders. And then on Monday and Tuesday, I can work on actually updating the shop website because that also does take me a few hours. So here's everything as a whole. I put everything up on the table just to like see actually how many that we had. I had to count them and everything like that too. Um, everything is here, everything looks good. If you've been here for a while, you guys know how I do things. Um, I do repot all of the plants because I like to check on their roots and sometimes they're always not in the greatest potting mix. I like to give them a new pot just in case they need an upgrade. Also, I like to give them a new potting mix, which is this potting mix right here. This is my personal potting mix that I use and the potting mix that I sell on my website. It is completely soil free. And then I have these little two containers down here. I have my little system of how I do this. I keep the big container underneath of the table and then I'm going to fill one of these containers with this mix so that I can have it on hand. And then the other container is used to put all of the old potting mix in. All of the old pots that the plants come in, I just list all those pots on Facebook and usually somebody comes and grabs them because I don't wanna just throw them out because they are nice pots. So I just list them on Facebook. Uh, you can see right here, these are all my plant pots that I'm going to be using. I'm gonna need more than that, but I just took out a couple for now. And then back here in this side of the room, I have more of these bins here. I'm going to be using these bins to put the repotted plants in them. I got all these bins a long time ago from Target. They work perfectly for what I need. When I'm repotting the plants, I do not use potting mats. I would prefer to just use a bin like this. I just have a lot of plants to repot all the time for the shop. It doesn't make sense to use something so small. Once I put all the plants in there, then I usually water them in those bins as well. And then once everything is good to go, I will fit all of the new plants into the shop wall over here and we will be good to go.
So I got myself all situated and set up. I'm probably gonna be doing this for a few hours. I don't know why, I just prefer to stand when I'm doing my repotting. Like it's just so much easier for me because I feel like when I'm sitting down, I have to constantly get up and it's just like, it's just better for me to just stand up pick everything up, put it over there when it's done. Like I have my whole little routine. So I like to stand. I'm gonna start working on the Hoyas first. I have some cups over here, just like these ones. I'm going to probably just take propagations as I go and just stick them in there. And then when I'm done like this part, I will work on potting up the propagations and stratum. This is going to be a long repot session. It's going to be sped up. I know a lot of my content is time-lapse and I hope you guys are okay with that. I just cannot be putting the full amount of footage at normal speed in these vlogs because we would be here forever. And when I'm doing this many repots, I just wanna kind of focus and just get it done and just listen to some music or watch YouTube or something. So I hope that the time lapses don't bother you, but it's just something that I have to do because it's just hours worth of footage that I just can't sit there and let it play at normal speed like that. Usually when I'm doing stuff like this, I prefer to just angle the camera down so you can just focus on what's being done. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started and I will check in with you guys when I'm working on all the propagations. It is like 10 o'clock at night. I am so tired. I had to do the propagation off camera. My memory cards were both full, so I just went ahead and finished up while I transferred the footage to my computer. I didn't really take as many props as I thought I was going to, and that's fine. I have a lot of props at the moment already that are still growing. I have like two bins worth, and I also got a ton of little babies from the Philodendron SP Columbia. This is just a bunch of Rapidophora Megasperma variegated. There's like four of them in here. I just stuck them all in here to root at the same time, and then once they start growing, I will just take them out and separate them. I have no more stratum left so I was just trying to do what I could for right now. I also have this one leaf cutting of a Rapidophora tetrasperma variegated. For the most part I kept little plants as they are. I didn't really cut them down. I did cut down the Monstera albos because they were just really really tall. So I cut them down into like one leafers and two leafers. So we have this one here and then we have this two leafer here. There's this leaf. This one I don't know if it's going to last the whole time. It's the older leaf so it's probably gonna go. I have them in a mixture of stratum and perlite. I go through stratum so fast here that it's just better for me to just mix it with perlite because it lasts a little longer. I also took this Rapidophora tetrasperma variegated too. This one is a three leafer. And I already have some of those propping so I didn't wanna like 
take too many. These are the little Hoya Mary Alice ones. And I didn't have a small cup, so I just cut the big cup and just made it into like a little tiny cup. And then I have this cute one here. This one is fuzzy. It is two plants in here. I'm probably gonna separate them once they get bigger. These are the other fuzzy Hoyas that I got in. These are so cute. I love this one. And I have one more Monstera Albo. It is a two leafer with a leaf coming in. So it has this leaf and then this one. The Monstera Albos definitely do take a little longer to root. Fingers crossed that I don't get any stem rot with them because the last ones I did, I do have the bottom cuts. They are going to be for sale. Usually when I sell bottom cuts, I sell them for much cheaper because they are a bottom cut and usually bottom cuts are not that nice looking. So really quick, I'm gonna just fill these with some water. I have this little spray bottle here, it's like electric. And I'm just gonna do that really quick. I just have everything over here on the floor in these little bins. Everything was pretty good. I had a really hard time though with the Epipremnum Yellow Flame. So the smaller one, I was able to just leave it as it is. This is a good size and I can ship this at this size. It's no problem. It was the bigger one that gave me a hard time. I did cut the big one down. This is the top cut right here. This plant is just solely surviving off of one long aerial root. So I'm going to put this to the side and wait until I feel confident enough to sell this because I don't know what's gonna happen in the next few days. It's probably gonna get some type of stress from being separated, but in the end, it's always gonna like recover. It's not that big of a deal, but I don't wanna sell it with just one root. This will be available, just not right now because it just doesn't have a good enough root system. But this one that I showed you, that one will be available as it is. This is actually the bottom cut of the one I just showed you, the top cut. It's just two leaves and this one is fully rooted. So this one will be available at a discount rate because it's a bottom cut and one of the leaves was already pre-cut so it is still really nice it is a nice size as you can see like compared to my hand it's pretty big as for the monstera albos like i said they were just super tall so i just had to cut them down and honestly the leaves are kind of like just beat up i don't know they're just not like perfect either um i'm not that like happy with them but that's usually how like the bottom leaves go. They're not like perfect, so they'll definitely be a little bit cheaper, but like, I don't even know if you can tell how tall this is. It's so freaking tall. Like I just didn't even know what to do with them. This whole bin is all alocasias. So since that these are all babies, when I'm repotting them, I'm not looking for corms because these are literal babies that were corm grown. I'm not looking for that. What I was looking for was the way that they were grown because all of the fried eggs actually had a mesh plug in them. The mesh plug thing can be a little controversial with some people in the plant community. You either have no problem with it or you absolutely hate it and that's fine. So I was looking for that and I actually found it in all of the fried eggs. So I wanted to make sure that the rest of them didn't have it. That's why it is kind of important to me to unpot all these plants because you just don't know what's going on in them. The last thing that I would want to happen is that somebody buys something from me. I didn't check it. It has a mesh plug in it. They hate it. And then they leave a bad review because it had a mesh plug in it or something stupid like that, you know? So I did remove all the mesh from all of them. Some of the fry ducks actually had pups growing off of them. So I was able to just separate the little pups into these little two inch containers here. And these little two inch ones, I'm going to store them in a plastic bin with the other two inch plants and just give them 100% humidity. And then when they're ready, I will take them out. But everything else is going to be stored in probably a display case. But yeah, all of them look pretty good. They're all decently sized too. Some of them are starting to size up as well. And then I also was able to get so many of these little guys. These are the Philodendron SP Columbia. I had two SP Columbias and they both had like 10 of these little babies just growing at the bottom. And I was just able 
able to separate all of them into their own little thing. I had a similar situation recently with the Philodendron El Choco Red. So I already have a bin of just little El Choco Red. So I'm just gonna put them in there as well once I get everything cleaned up. A couple of the bigger ones had some root rot on the bottom, but that's kind of expected when you're dealing with really large plants. Um, they usually do, but it wasn't enough for it to like really make a difference in the plant. So I'm gonna water them and then just leave the fan on overnight and then I will be back tomorrow so that we can start cleaning these up and get their labels on and start taking some pictures for the shop. Today's Saturday and here is all of the plants. I just left them in their container and just sat them underneath the fan since I did water them. Some of the smaller plants I am not gonna be putting up right away just because they are too tiny and I wanna make sure that they have a better root system before I put them up. So I am going to be cleaning off all the leaves today and making the labels and doing pictures for the shop website. Also just using this time to check everything because some are a little limp because they have dried out. Um, they just need some water so I'm going to just rewater like all of these small guys especially because they're so tiny and then put them in a humidity bin so that they stay nice and moist but everything else looks pretty good the Hoyas are great um and all the rest of the plants look pretty good too. I'm gonna just sit here and start cleaning up everything and start making the labels. I know that the vlogs probably are a little bit repetitive, but this is really like what I have to do every single week. So I hope that it's not boring to you. There's just a lot of steps that go into restocking my shop and it's going to be the same thing every time we have a big restock and stuff. Also look who's here. She's like, she's like obsessed with me right now. She like just wants to be all over me. So I just have her in here usually I keep the door shut but she's like crying at the door there's always a lot to do with the shop and I'm always just you know restocking and getting things ready for you guys and stuff like that I don't really have the time to do like sit down videos and like chit chat and you know do like my own plants and stuff like that I'm gonna be using my neem oil solution here to clean the leaves off I will have the link to the neem oil concentrate that I use it's just a bottle of neem oil concentrate it's very thick it's not like the neem oil like pre-made spray you have to actually mix it yourself and you just add water and a mild dish soap to it and it will create like a nice solution to wipe your plants leaves down that's what I've always used my like whole plant journey and I like swear by it so that will be linked in the description as well as everything else plant related that I like to use for the shop so just make sure you check it out because probably the things that you're looking for are in there. And I just wipe them down with like these microfiber cloths. Microfiber cloths are really good to use for your plant's leaves, especially when they're like dusty and stuff. You could just use it as it is or put water on it or a solution. It's like really whatever you choose to do. And then I just label each plant by like the type of plant they are. And like I label them by like number. So if I have multiples of them, I will say like Monstera Alba one, two, three, because I don't like to do grower's choice. And I feel like most of the time the plants look different. So I want you guys to be able to choose your plant so that's how I like to do stuff this is just a little Bluetooth label maker I got from Amazon it's also linked in my Amazon favorites as well she's going crazy so she's gonna be sitting next to me let's just go ahead and get started
Today is Sunday, it is Easter. Happy Easter to everybody that celebrates. Yesterday I managed to finish cleaning up all the plants. I did not get around to getting the pictures done. As you can see, now we have this one here. I was literally finishing up cleaning the plants off and people were already walking through the door because I had company, so I had to just wrap it up. Um, but I did manage to finish getting them cleaned up and all their labels made, so I figured I would just continue today. But first, I'm going to pack the orders and get them done and out the way. I like to get my orders packed on Sunday and I like to do that before I do anything else because I just like getting it out of the way because it can take a couple hours. Um, since it is Easter weekend, I did run a Easter sale. I did a 10% off sale for all the plants in the shop. I also got an Etsy order yesterday, I think. And I just got another order right now for another plant because I just sent out like a notification on Instagram and the YouTube community tab that today's the last day for the sale. Probably not gonna have another sale for quite a while because we don't have any holidays coming up. I have everything picked out and on my table ready to go. So let me show you guys everything. Why is your tail puffed up? What is wrong with you? But you're like purring, but your tail's puffed up, why? Oh my goodness. I feel like it's been a while since you guys seen Cookie and all the cats really, but this girl snuck in here cause she wants some love. So she'll be hanging out with us today. I wanna try packing at a different angle for this video. I just hope it looks nice. I hope that you guys can see everything a little bit more clear maybe from this angle. But first I wanted to show you guys, I finally made new thank you cards. My old thank you cards finally ran out. So I wanted to make some new ones that fit my new kind of like rebrand. I think this is like my third rebrand brand. I mean, I've had Plant Life Lex since like 2022. So I think it's okay to like, you know, change it up and stuff. Currently, this is my logo. Very simple. I think I am just kind of over having like a logo with like a plant behind it. I know it sounds like kind of dumb because I am a plant store, but I wanted to transition my shop and everything to be like more sleek and modern. And I just prefer very simple stuff. And also with so many plant shops out there, everybody kind of has the same logo because we all design them on Canva and everybody has the same picture of like plants that they use for their logo. It's very easy to have the exact same logo as somebody else and that's not something that I wanted. I just wanted it to be very sleek and simple and straight to the point. So the thank you cards are still like postcard style. These are four by six. Um, it just says, thank you so much for your order. And then it says like a little like thank you note here. If you ever wanna show off your unboxings or photos or updates of anything that you purchased, you can tag me directly on Instagram and you can also do hashtag. I actually prefer you do hashtag because sometimes I don't get all of your tags because they go into my like hidden request box on Instagram and I don't see it until like weeks later. So I also put a QR code on the front. This will lead you to my new frequent asked questions and my unboxing guide on my shop. Basically just giving all the new customers the rundown of any questions that they probably have and how to unbox your items if you have any issues with your items it's just a good frequent ask question guide and i think it was nice to just feature it on the card and then this is what the back looks like very similar to the front but i left a huge space here so that i can actually write a personalized note on it something new i've implemented for the shop within a few months ago was to only give thank you notes to new customers it gets a little bit redundant when you are giving them out to repeat buyers and if it's like a special like order or something like that i I will still give you one of these and I will still write something special on it, like if it's your birthday or something like that. Let's get into everything that's sold. So we sold both of the Philodendron Patrice that we restocked last week. We have this one here. This one is in a five inch pot. And then we also sold the four inch pot one as well. They have really nice leaves. We have this really beautiful four inch pot of Philodendron Jose Bono. Look at this beautiful leaf that just came in. It is stunning. The Jose is definitely one of my favorite plants. We also have this really cute Hoya Craspiolata. Look at the splashy leaves. These were such a hit. This is like our last one. I do have some propagations going. They should be ready within the next week or so, honestly. And then we have this little starter of this Philodendron El Choco Red. I'm gonna give you guys an update on all the little plants because we have a ton of them. And a lot of the El Choco Reds are starting to have like a lot of roots if you can see them in there. So I did start moving them to the ready to be sold bin. Some of them I'm going to leave them in the two inch pots and some of them I'm going to wait until they're big enough for four inch pots. But these are great little starter plants. They're super cute. 
and they're a lot of fun to grow when they're this size. And then we have this Philodendron Burl Marks Variegated. This one is obviously reverted and it was noted that it is reverted. This actually came from a variegated plant. It's from my personal variegated plant downstairs. The way that the plant is growing, it's growing half reverted and half variegated. So I did have a variegated cutting and then I had a non-variegated one and both of them have now sold. And this one is in stratum and as you can see, it's living its best life. I'm telling you guys, stratum is the way to go for a quick property. And then lastly for the plants, I have this one leafer here. This is a philodendron white knight. It's a bottom cut. So this was a clearance plant here and it has several growth points as well. So it's probably going to grow some beautiful leaves coming soon. So moving into the accessories, we sold two of our acrylic plant display cases. They come wrapped in bubble wrap and they also have an instruction manual. And then I do wrap them again just to secure them. We're going through them kind of quickly. So if you've been thinking about getting one, make sure that you do before they're gone because they are like the perfect community boxes for your plants and a lot of people have shared how much they love them and what it's doing for their plants so make sure you guys check them out as well we sold quite a few moss poles this weekend too we have the minis here this is the clear mini and this is the white mini all the moss poles come flat you have to assemble it yourself you just bend them together and put it into the little slots and then you have yourself a nice moss pole and then these are also extendable so you can just stack them on top of each other and keep extending your pole this is completely transparent it does have a film on both sides it's just to protect it because usually highly clear items they do scratch a lot so they do have that film then we also have the small size which is bigger than the mini this is frosted clear here there is no film on this this is exactly what it looks like then we have the clear ones with the film on it and then we also have the white also sold quite a few trellises honestly between this week i've sold a bunch of trellises i just checked my stock and i'm actually getting quite low on some of them so i think i'm just going to go ahead and do a repurchase soon these are the large u-shaped ones here and then these are the small u-shape and then we have the large round sold a handful of plant pots i do sell all clear plant pots ranging from sizes 2.5 all the way to 9.5 so if you're looking for those big clear plant pots we do have them we have a little 2.5 inch one here this is a five inch one this is the tall pot with the air slots on the side has drainage holes on the bottom this is a seven inch we have a regular eight inch one here and then we have a regular nine inch one here as well and then we also sold some of the seedling trays as well these are great for your little propagations if you're starting seeds these are good for for alocasia corms, even gardening, if you have gardening starters and stuff like that too. So we have the black here, and then we also have a fully clear one if you like to see what's really going on in there. So that's everything as of right now. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I have to write up the thank you cards, and then once I'm done packing, we can jump into finishing up the restock.
All the orders are packed, here they are. If I get any more orders today or overnight, I will just pack them in the morning. I just took a little bit of a break to just eat some lunch because I was so hungry. But now I need to finish up the restock. I definitely need to get these pictures done today and be done with it. So here's everything that's gonna go up for sale this week. We have five bins and then I also took the propagations and put them away as well. So let me show you guys those two. On this shelf specifically, I do keep all propagations and rehabs, damage plants, stuff like that. So I have some of the Monstera albos over here. They are too tall for the plastic bin. So they're gonna just have to sit there underneath the grow light. And then in here I have all the little plants. So there is a lot of them now in here. This system that I got going on here works really good for all of your seedlings and stuff. Um, these are also containers from Target and they have like a clear lid on it. They work perfectly for the tiny stuff. The SP Columbia's, they were a little bit limp because they were really thirsty when I first got them in the mail. Um, but I kept them in the humidity bin overnight and they're looking much better now. So we have the SB Columbia's, we have the little Florida ghost here. And then I have two of these Alocasia fry duck variegated, these little babies. So here's like El Choco Reds. We still have a couple of these. Here's an update on the two queen seedlings. I did sell one as is. I'm gonna wait until these ones get a little bit bigger. Uh, here's like the newest leaf. It's really big. So we do have a lot of things in here and having them in the higher humidity definitely helps when they're this small. So I don't usually have to water these for a while because it stays nice and humid in here. And then in this bin, we have some more propagation. I have some new stuff in here, mostly some of the older stuff. Just putting my hand in here, I can feel how warm it is, so that's good. Having a nice steady warm temperature makes a big difference in your propagations as well. That's why I really prefer to keep them in the bins or the display cases because it's just so humid that it gets so hot in there and you'll notice that the plants grow like a lot faster. But there is a bunch of stuff in here that is like almost ready to go. And then I put some of the newer stuff in here too. And then some of the new Monster albums that could fit and then just some other stuff. So I pretty much have everything organized by type. This just makes it a little bit easier for me to take the picture so that I'm not getting like all jumbled up and confused. And then I just use my phone for the pictures and then probably tomorrow night I will just sit on the computer and work on the listings so that I can have Tuesday and Wednesday to edit this vlog. I have not even started editing this vlog, which is probably gonna take quite a while. Once I'm done with the pictures, I will sort them into the plant wall and that will be it for today.
I'm pretty much done with the restock. This was probably one of the biggest restocks I've ever had. When you guys see this video, there's gonna be so many new plants on the shop for you guys. So make sure you guys go ahead to my shop website and check everything out. I kind of was playing Tetris with a lot of the plants because I actually never had this many plants on the shop at the same time. And there's a lot of plants that are bigger than usual. So I had to kind of squeeze them together. So let me show you guys how I organize everything. I've had this setup in particular for quite a few months now, I think. I have the three wired shelves against the back wall. And then I have another shelf on the left side that's dedicated to all the propagations, rehabs and stuff like that. Once some of the other plants start selling I will move things around and fit them more accordingly I really keep like bigger plants on this one that's why it's configured a little bit different so that I can fit them it looks crazy in there but um, it's just for a little while and then in the middle I have a mixture of all types of things and then mostly usually on the left side I keep Hoyas um, but I had to mix in some other plants as well. When I was organizing the plants, I realized there's quite a few plants in here that are not on the shop. Probably going to put those up next week. I'm done this week. I'm not gonna do any more. Like, I'm just not gonna add anything else this week. I already have like 500 plant photos that I need to go through for this week's update. So I will save those other ones for next time. It's not that big of a deal either. Down at the bottom, I have this mess in here, kind of just fitting things wherever I can. So in the middle on the top shelf and the one on the left, I just have some acrylic plant display cases up here. I can comfortably fit a lot of like the fluval plants in there that are for sale. I try to like stick them in the display cases. So usually the ones in the middle, this section, those are already on the website. And then all the plants that are on this side in the cases, these are all ones that I have pulled out of the prop bins that are going to be coming up for another restock. So I kind of have my system here, like how I know what's on the shop and what's not. I really hope that you guys can see it's so hard sometimes with the grow lights because they're so bright. The camera picks it up very weird. So I hope that you guys can actually see everything. In this tray, I have like all the Raptophoras. And then over here, I have the Monstera Arias, the Florida Beauties, and the Monstera Lechley Rianas. And then I do have an acrylic plant display case. I have it vertically and I just have the Alocasia Bambinos in there because it fits four perfectly. I have the Epipremnum Gigantium Variegated in here. And I think one of the Raptophora Megasperm they're kind of big so I just stuck them like by themselves so if you've been keeping up with the vlogs when I got the acrylic plant display cases a lot of them came damaged so a lot of them were cracked or broken they still can be put together but it's you know a defect so I have so many of them and honestly I was thinking about maybe selling them as like a discounted box like an oopsie box or something like that I don't know like even though they're cracked they're still usable like you can still put them together probably won't be 100% humidity but it's really nothing a little bit of tape can't fix I have just so many of them just lying around I don't know what to do with them um, so let me know what you guys think about that idea. I usually will use the broken ones because I don't care so this one in particular is two cases that I kind of like taped together. It's real ghetto, but it works. So this is not how they function, okay? Like I don't want you to think like this is how they stack together. This is not how it works. I just did this because I wanted to. Basically what I did was I took two of them. For this one, I just didn't put the back on. And then for this one, I just didn't put the front on. I stacked them on top of each other and I literally just taped them together and I just made a really big box. I wanted to put all of the alocasias in there because like I wanted them to be still like on display, but like not hidden away because I was going to put them in just like a regular like big plastic bin, but it's like kind of ugly. But I figured that this looks cute. Honestly, if you really wanted to, you probably could make a really big box and just tape it together. And then on the bottom, I just have the anthuriums down here because I honestly feel like they were a little too close to the light anyway. So I think I might just keep them down here. I have so many trellis Hoyas this round. I just stuck them all up here because they fit perfectly. Down here I have some more of the Hoyas. There is a couple Hoyas in the back there that aren't on the shop. So those are going to be going up probably next week. And then I also fit in the Syngonium Chia Pins Variegated. There's two. Going to wrap the vlog up here because it's probably really long. We did a lot in this vlog. Thank you guys for watching and hanging out with me today. I hope you guys enjoy today's vlog and I will see you guys next week in my next one. Bye.